Hello everybody and welcome to episode 4 of my Ultimate Interloper Survival Guide. First of all I want to apologise for no episode last week. Uh, I decided to take a week away from streaming and a week away from the long dark. So with that Surrounded came... by snow. Nothing to drink. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's uh, shut Will up uh, forever. <laughs> I apologise for last week. I took a week off. Took a little break from uh, content in general. But we're back. I actually haven't played TLD all week, so I've probably forgot the controls. I've been playing Minecraft a lot with friends. We've been having a blast, and uh, you're probably going to see me mess up the controls. But that's fine. This game is like riding a bike. We'll get back into it. It's only been a week. It's only been a week. It feels like forever, though, sometimes when you take a short break from the long dark. At least when you play it as much as I do. Um, Before we start today, I just want to address a comment. So let me just bring this up so I can read it. We had a comment on the first episode from Dogglefax72. This is the comment. It says, hey, I got a question. Could you talk about all the important tool spawns, like hammers, matches, hacksaw, also the tools run, like the one in Timberwolf Mountain, if you have the hacksaw, the hammer will be near the summit, uh, etc. So what Dogglefax is talking about here are the loot tables. Now, I know we have, as we've been going around, I have been pointing to certain hammer spawns, certain hacks, potential hacksaw spawns, certain potential hammer spawns, match spawns, stuff like that. So we have talked about it, but let's quickly talk about how the... Um, loot tables work in the long back. So if you hear somebody say loot to loot tables, they're referring to the way, at least in the interloper context, they're usually referring to the way that the hammer, the, the guaranteed items are the necessary items like the hammer, hacksaw, and bedroll are distributed throughout the map. Um, and how they link together because they, they tie into each other. Um, just like just like Dogglefax mentioned here. So before we talk about it, let's talk about how they used to work, because that's important. The way it used to be is there was four possible tool variations to allow a little bit of randomness. This allowed the developers to guarantee that we was able to get at least a few hammers, a few hacksaws, a few bedrolls, but not having them spawn randomly so that you don't get them too close together or too far apart, making the runs way too easy or way too hard. Also, it was better to do it this way than to just guarantee them in certain locations, which means the second time around, third time around, you're always going to know exactly where they are. So they created four distinct loot tables. Um, and basically, these things were fixed. So if you found the hammer in a certain location, and then you found the hacksaw in another location, you would know next time that if the hammer was in that same spot, then you knew where the hacksaw was going to be. Same goes with the bedroll. And over time, uh, well, first of all, people made note of these and actually created tables online that you can go and look up and you could use those as a, as a reference um you find your hammer you check the table oh i can see where my hacksaws are going to be or, or where all my hacksaws are going to be all my bedrolls etc um the way it works now is a little bit different but it's still the same system um back in december hinterland released an update which refreshed all the loot so this went for this changed the possible spawns in containers this changed the possible loose item spawns, and it also changed the guaranteed loot tables, the four fixed loot tables. And there are still four loot tables, but there's a little bit more variability in them now. So, for example, there is still some consistency. So, like, for example, now I know if you have a hacksaw in Trappers, you end up learning these by playing. But also, by, if you want to look, if you, if you don't mind looking at the document and kind of spoiling it a little bit for yourself to give yourself the upper, upper hand, you can learn them either way, right? But... The way I know it currently, for example, just from playing, is if I find a hacksaw at Trappers, I know there'll be a hammer in the lower dam, lower dam, and vice versa. If there's a hammer in Trappers, there'll be a hacksaw in the lower dam. And the lower dam spot has some variability. So if you do get the hammer in Trappers, the hacksaw will be in the lower dam, but it can be in multiple places. I don't know if it's three or four. Again, you learn the spots, you check them all. What I recommend, if you want it, for me personally, if you want to enjoy the game more, and treat it like a true survival experience. It's better to not look, not look these things up, and just learn by playing. Then you're actually exploring the world, looking in every nook and cranny. Eventually, you might they might start to stick. There's really no way around that. The more runs you do, especially if you're doing a lot of tough challenges uh, where you're doing a lot of restarts, or you're doing a lot of shorter challenges where you know you, you you do 50 days in one zone, let's say, and then you start a new run and do 50 days in another zone. There are a million types of challenges out there. The point is, if you're doing a lot of restarts, you really start to learn them naturally. Um, but if you want to look up the documents, I absolutely do not blame you. A document has been created for the new loot tables, and that was created by Bashrobe. I'll leave a link to that document in the description. I'll also leave a document, sorry, I will leave a link to Bashrobe's uh, Twitch and his YouTube as well. Uh, he's a great content creator, a good friend. Definitely worth checking his stuff out. Great player too. So, the way it works now is, like I said with the lower dam, you know that it's going to be there, but it can be in multiple different spots. And the same goes, this goes for a lot of... of uh, 
of the tools and a lot of the spawns. Not many of them are in one place. So, for example, I don't know if this is a true example. I'm just making this one up. But it might be that if you find a bed rolling winding river, there's always an outdoor hammer in Mystery Lake. But that outdoor hammer could still be in, like, seven different spots. So, within each loot table, there's still some variability, which means you don't definitely know, even by checking the document, it's only going to give you a bunch of locations rather than a set one, but it can help you narrow it down. Um, so that's how it currently works. Obviously, I'm not going to go over every single possible spawn here. The document is there if you want it. Um, but that's how it works now. So you can still link items together. You can still look up the loot tables or, or memorize the loot tables and you utilize those to see where your tool is going to be. But it might not be in that exact spot. It could be, oh, it's going to be in this region, but any of these five spots. And there are some guaranteed spots too. So, for example, Hush River Valley always has a bedroll in several different spots in in. Se in, in one of several spots it always has a hacksaw it always uh, in, in one of several spots and it always has a hammer which is always at the signal fire now a signal fire can be in two different spots if you know anything about hush river valley you'll be familiar with that uh, once we get to hush river valley we'll talk a little bit more about the signal fire and this loot etc okay so let's get into it anyway i don't want to talk much longer but um i hope that helps doggle facts out uh, and there is resources out there to learn all the locations if that's what you wish now i think we're in the dam looks like it's very early morning we're not in the dam, we're in the trailers right outside the dam. But close enough. And I think we just dropped our maple in there, did we? So it looks like we dropped our maple in the dam. Did we make a note? We did not. So at this point in the run, once you've got your maple and your birch, that's when you decide where you're gonna craft, right? And because we have so much food and we're gonna be getting so much more, we know that we can leave the hammer, uh, excuse me, we can leave the maple and the birch together. And, the, and we need guts to go along with it. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to find guts. And we're going to put them with the maple. And we put them at a workbench, which is the dam. If it was coming from another side of the map, let's say we spawn in Hush River Valley and we got everything there, we can leave them at a workbench in Mountain Town. Depending on where you spawn, it's really your decision based on when you find them. But I wouldn't bother dropping, I wouldn't bother gathering the guts early because then they're going to stink and there's guts everywhere. I would focus on getting your birch. And once you've got the maple and the birch, then dropping them together and dropping, finding some guts nearby. So guts are gonna be attainable either from one, carcasses, right? Like deer carcasses, wolf carcasses, which are a little bit rarer, but you do find them. Um, or from rabbits. Can't get them from ptarmigans, but you can get them from rabbits, which obviously you can hunt with the stone. Uh, the other option would be a deer, but we don't have a weapon for those yet. However, um, if a wolf happened to kill a deer, that would be another way to do it. And the other option would be bears or moose, but because we don't have a weapon, that's really not an option yet. They can be killed with the flare gun. Flare shells are so rare now that I wouldn't recommend it. I would, I would recommend using those um, for self-defense, because it's one of the best defensive weapons in the game. We'll talk about that. Or it is the best defensive weapon in the game, game in my opinion. And we'll talk about that once we actually find one. Um, because I think, do we even have... Yeah, we don't even have the gun, and never mind the shells. <laughs> now, as far as tools, we have the hacks, we have the hammer, we still don't have the bedroll. Now, Mystery Lake has a pretty good chance for a bedroll, and there is one, two... Three, four, five, six spots, I want to say. There's also Winding River, which is close by, but we checked that last time. And it sounds like we've got brutal weather. So can we do anything with our time here? Let's get some food in, in Will's stomach. We're going to go for the heavier foods. So the cattails, uh, they're actually the same weight as the as the chips and the granola bar, but a little bit um, less chance of giving us food poisoning. Or no chance of giving us food poisoning. And also the salty benefit of the chips and granola bar can be useful in the right situation. We talk, I, I know we've gone over with food weights before. I shouldn't go in too deep into it, but I just want to mention it occasionally. Get it to stick in your head like it does with me. Uh, beef jerky is slightly lighter than the cattails. Potatoes, I believe, are heavier. I haven't actually done the math. Or maybe I did and I've just forgot. But either way, they need cooking first. We want to use them for their warmth bonus. Crackers are super lightweight. They're, our, they're our, the last food we eat. Now, the other thing we need to think about is... So, we're going to get guts down. We're going to go get, we're going to head towards the forge. We're going to check bedroll spots along the way and hopefully get one. If not, we'll look for one after forging. And, but we need scrap metal for the forge as well. Now, how many do we have? We have five. Realistically, I think we should make about 12 arrowheads on our first forge. Now, if you're liable to losing arrows, um, if you lose arrows a lot, you have a lot of, like, let's say you miss a lot, hit like the body of the deer and the deer runs away and you end up tracing them, tracking them down. And sometimes, you know, they just get away from you and you can't find them. If you lose a lot of arrowheads, go ahead and make more. You can make 20, you can make 30. We have the fuel, we have the food for it. By this point, you should have the fuel and the food too. Um, if you do not have the food or the fuel, go to Mountain Town first because there's coal on the way into Mountain Town. There's coal in multiple places in Mountain Town and there's tons of food. Um, but we're fine. I mean, we've got to hit this whole river soon, which is going to be 
we're gonna have too many cattails. We'll probably end up putting some down, to be honest. But we'll see. We'll see. So it sounds like brutal weather. Let's get going before you guys get really bored. Let's do some just odd tasks here. It's not quite light enough to repair anything, so we'll just harvest some of these bits. But our focus is guts. Our focus is guts. So we're going to check some carcass locations and some rabbit locations. That's our priority number one right now. And we've got all this birch we can craft. Okay, so uh, Mystery Lake has a lot of wolf spots that are kind of narrow, so just going to pre-light a torch here because we're going to need one anyway for the carcass, right? We need, if we're going to get guts, we're going to need a fire. So let's just start with a fire early today. We don't need to save all the matches. It's all situational. We heard the wind stop, so we know we're okay. And we crouched before we left. Always crouch before you leave. Remember that one. Oh, we were already sneaking. The main reason I want a torch now is because there can be a wolf like one, right? There he is, right below this bridge, and I've been surprised by him way too many times. So let's um, do the old trick here. Oh, he's a little confused. He'll get to me. Very confused. And there can be a carcass down here, and there it is. So perfect. It's not always here. Sometimes it's in the yard itself. It can be in multiple spots. Luckily, we got this one right here, and because we have the hacksaw, this should be a nice, quick, easy harvest. And we might as well take the meat as well. Why not? It's free food. Let's get all the sticks we can. The more sticks we have, the more coal we save. We don't need to worry about that wolf. We're safe with this torch. Just walk away, and when we're ready to stop, we'll just scare him away. And this dish should give us some feathers, which is another thing we're going to need if we're going to want to make arrows. But there's a lot of feathers in the world. A lot. You never need to worry about feathers. Maybe at the very start. So it's negative 16. Let's just make this fire plus 10. So this will give us plus 4. Can't really do the math for that unless we grab a couple of extra sticks from the area. We didn't, if we had another coal, we would be way over 10 degrees and it would be an unnecessarily hot fire, an unnecessarily long fire. Grab all the bits from around here, this should be enough. Let's leave ourselves a couple of sticks just in case. Do we have any birch teas ready to warm up? We do. And let's throw down some rose hips as well. And remember, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click. It's going to stop them from burning. They can stay by that fire now, they'll stay warm forever, at least until the fire goes out. Did we get a skillet on this run? We just found the pot, didn't we? Did we decide to leave the skillet? I'm sorry, it's been a while. Yeah, we did, and that was the right decision. Okay, so let's take the meat first. Let's see how long it's going to take. We're going to do it in half kilos, but let's just see. It's going to be 15 minutes in total. So let's make the minimum amount of water we can, since it's going to take 40 minutes to melt and boil here, and 30 minutes to melt and boil here. We can take the meat now. And we'll do it in half kilo segments, just to help our cooking skill points a little bit. And here comes the wind. This might change our plans. Let's drop this so we're not stinking, especially with the wolf around. The wind did pick up, but our fire is still alive. So let's go again. Another five minutes. And we'll check the fire again, just to make sure it's okay. Press three to drop the meat immediately. The sooner you drop it, the less attention you're gonna, you're gonna get from the wolves. Because the second that meets in your inventory, wherever he is right now, he'll have turned and walked in our direction. Because their stent range is massively amplified when you've got meat. And the fire's still good, so let's get the last piece. If it's five minutes, we don't have to worry, because even if the fire gets knocked down, that's going to give us nine minutes. And let's drop it. And the fire's still good. Now for the important one, the guts. The guts are going to take, I believe, 15 minutes each. And our current harvesting level, 30 minutes each. Oops. 30 minutes each, so that's because it's not defrosted yet, right? I might be wrong. Let's just say 30 minutes for now and we'll see in a moment. Um, probably just going to take out the stinky water. We can boil it later. And we'll actually put a fresh one in. No, we'll put we'll cook the meat now. We'll cook the meat. 30 minutes. 20 minutes. That's perfect. Let's take a gut. And what we're doing is we're watching our temp bar while we harvest. Because that was a 30 minute job. 
there's a very high chance that the wind could have picked up and blew the fire out. So we're watching the tent bar. The second that tent bar starts to fly down, suddenly while time is passing, it means the fire has gone out. And we need to immediately cancel by hitting escape um, in order to... Well, we don't want to take too much cold damage, do we? I'll be sitting here harvesting meat with a wolf around and no fire. So the meat's ready. It should be 100% condition. It just got cooked and it's just freshly taken off the deer. So let's get it right in us immediately. Oh, and we also need to hit three to drop that gut. It's got stink too. Oh, we already did it. I did it. Habitually. And the other goat we know is going to take 30 more minutes. Let's just see. Yeah, it is always 30 minutes with the hacksaw then at, fire, at, uh, at harvesting one. So I apologize for that mistake. I guess I uh, got comfortable with having level 5 harvesting. So let's just do this. Boom. We'll just drop that as well immediately. Let's take this. Take this. And how are we doing? We got we got too much water as it is. So we don't need to make any more. Let's just get out of here. It's a little bit risky in the wind. But the wind strength that is necessary to blow out a fire is the same wind strength that is necessary to blow out a torch. So the fact that the fire is not blowing out, even though it's not protected, you can see the wind's coming this way. That means that our um, that torch will be 100% safe as well. Unless the wind picks up. But we'll try and stay away from the wolves. And we'll take this raw meat with us. It's gonna We're going to be stinking a little bit more than normal. The next fire, we'll make sure we get that cooked. And we got five torches. So let's grab our guts. We're going to take them right to where our maple is. And that's in the dam. Uh, big thanks to everybody who's still watching the series. I had two really nice comments this week. Um, from different people. Which was really nice to hear. Oh, hello. So you always got to be ready. This guy came out from behind a tree. But yeah, big thanks to those people and anybody else who's watching as well. You never have to, don't feel the need to write a comment or anything like that. Um, but those go a long way. They make me motivated, so I appreciate it. And they make me, you know, uh, happy. This guy is going to be relentlessly bothering us for as long as we're stinking. But it's more important to us that we just deliver this meat right now and deliver these guts. Or, or keep this meat and deliver these guts. We really don't need the meat because we have so much food. But since the weather is allowing us to carry a torch, meaning we're safe, then we might as well carry the food. It's extra food. It's going to make our cattails last longer. And as soon as we deliver this, we're going to go look for the bedroll. We'll take you to, I'll take you to the first spot. If we get the bedroll there, I'm still going to take you to the other spots because you might not have them. Let's shut this gate for safety reasons. You might not have that particular bedroll. You might have it in a different spot. drop those guts there's our maples there's our birch and what we're going to do because we didn't do it last time is we're going to make a note on when the maple is cured the guts take five days the birch take four days the maple takes five so that's the most important one to make a note of because that's going to take the longest we can't use the arrows without the bow so maple is going to be for our bow it's 11 percent cured meaning it's let's just say 10 percent of the way so 10 percent of six days we can do a little bit of math i like to use a calculator you don't have to do this especially if you're good at mental math or if you just want to wing it for me personally, I do 24 hours times 6 days, 244 hours, and then I find out what 10% of that is, 14. So that means we have about 130 hours left, and then I do 130 divided by 24 hours. You really don't need to do this, I'm sorry, I know some people uh, struggle with math, and that's absolutely fine. This is uh, simple enough, but I know people, you know, people are good at different things, so don't worry too much. Um, it's 6 days, so temp even with without doing the math, you can say, alright, 6 days, 10% gone, it's probably going to be about, you know, un under five days left on it or, uh, or just over five days left on it something like that you can get a rough idea but the, the other the other way to do it would be to just keep coming back and checking but what this does is allows us to forge and if there's any time left we can go to other stuff while we're waiting so about five and a half days is what i'm getting it's currently it's currently like just after sunrise so remember sunrise is 6 a.m and noon is uh, sun at the top is noon so we're somewhere in between we're around we're around the 8 a.m 9 a.m mark um so we're looking at five and a half days let's say so it is day seven in the calendar so we're gonna we're gonna go here we're gonna say maple in dam just to remind ourselves especially if we have multiple runs going on cured day so seven plus six is cured 
day 13, and then it's, like we said, it's about 8 a.m. plus half a day. So around 8 p.m. this will be done. And my torch went out. Yeah, did I mention I'm a noob? <laughs> Is it just me or did it sound wind? Does it sound really windy, like windier than it was? Anyway, it doesn't matter. This sometimes happens with the torch. It is what it is. It is what it is. Especially when I'm talking away. Uh, you won't see it happen much when I'm playing regularly. But it is what it is. There's enough matches in the world. Don't stress yourself out. Seems like the wind really picked up, doesn't it? I think what we should do is play it safe here. We could light another torch, but that seems really risky at the minute. And since we're not going to be travelling with a torch now, because we lost our torch, let's just leave this meat. This meat is probably going to go bad. Let's leave it outside. It'll last longer outside. It's probably going to go bad, but we could always eat it later in the run when we're able to get around. Uh, when we're able to get around that with our cooking five skill. Doesn't matter how long you leave it there. Once you get cooking five, it'll be fine to eat. No issues. So I really like for this wind to go away. So what we're going to do is gather some extra scrap metal here. Now, we we talked earlier. I didn't actually continue what I was saying earlier, did I? But we want uh, about twelve arrows. Each scrap gives us two arrowheads. So six scrap is enough. The knife costs 3 and the hatchet costs 5, so we want 8 plus 6 is 14. We only have 5, but there's always a lot of the musk egg. But since we're here anyway and we have downtime, let's pick a couple up. And what we want is the, the most bang for our buck, so we want the things to give us the most scrap metal for the least amount of time, and that would be these lamps. So these lamps give us 1 in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, 1 scrap. Nothing else is as good as that, except for some things, some things are the same as that. So let's take a look around and I'll show you some other objects that are very similar. We have these, uh, see these ceiling lights? Sometimes you get ones on the ground, like this one in the bathroom. I'm going to turn off the lantern so we're not wasting fuel while we harvest. Just got to look for it in the dark, stand in front of it, turn off the lantern, look in the dark. This one's 30 minutes for two, so it's the same thing. Instead of 15 minutes for one, it's double for double. And we'll do that one as well. Why not? Like I said, we'll probably get enough scrap in the musk egg, but since we have some downtime here, let's just let's just go for it. Still sounds really bad, doesn't it? Take a quick peek. It might be okay, but I just don't want to have to light a torch if we don't have to. Let's not. This is a guide here where we're supposed to be showing you the best way to survive. I wouldn't be doing a very good job if I walked out there and got hit by a wolf immediately. The, the wind is your enemy and it's okay to be afraid of the wind. It's okay to be smart at times and be afraid of stuff. You don't need to go running out like a crazy man all the time. We've got food. We've got fuel, we've got time, we've got all the time in the world. It's still early, it's still early in the run. I don't want to spend multiple episodes in the dump, but let's just grab a couple more lights. So we've got another one here. And let's see. There's also wood if you run out if you have think you have enough scrap there's always crates you can break as well you might not want to take that fuel with you right now because you have enough but you might need it later and yeah we're looking for lamps we're looking for ceiling light fixtures and there's some more ceiling light fixtures let's do both of these hopefully we get a weather change always keep an eye on your calories and remember it's going to tell you just exactly how much calories it's going to cost so 125 we have 420 calories in our, in our in us right now, so this is absolutely fine. And let's go check it out again. Now we have more than enough scrap. In fact, we have all the scrap we'll need. Doesn't sound good at all, does it? This is just the way it goes sometimes, guys. This is just the way it goes. Wind all day. Typical. Let's eat. And then let's do some repairs. Now we need two cloth for the forge because the knife is going to cost one and the hammer, uh, the hacksaw is going to cost one. So we need at least two of these to be kept. So let's use our one cloth that we have. Let's sort these by condition. T-shirt has took the most damage. Let's repair it. And 
Anything else we can tear up? Nope. Do we, can we use our lever to repair anything? These are too high to worry about. Let's let them drop a little bit before we, we repair those. Those do take lever though. And let's take a look around for some cloth. Okay, there's always a cloth here. I thought there was. I didn't want to say it in case I was wrong. Okay, let's pull this. It's just one cloth. Doesn't look light in here, but it is daytime, so it's absolutely fine. This is going to cost us one cloth. 30 minutes. Doom. And we failed it. So we lost that cloth, but that's fine. you got to fail some. It's just the way it goes. Right, I'd really like to leave now. At this point, I start worrying about the episode... I don't want to rush it, because that's not what I would do if I wanted to survive. But at the same time, I don't want to bore the crap out of you guys. It's just kind of the way it goes. Okay, much better. Much better. And we don't have any stick now, so we don't have to play as cautiously. But we still want to watch out for the wolves. So we're going to have the torch at the red air. And we're going to take wide corners. So anywhere where a wolf can be hiding, we're going to walk very wide. To give, him enough, give ourselves enough time to hear him and to light the torch. And I'm going to stop speaking for a minute here, because... Because of this wolf, because this wolf has a tendency to hide and sneak up on you, I want to be able to hear his feet. There he is. So we need to pass him. Look at him glitching into the floor. We need to pass him, so it's going to cost us a match. How are we doing on matches? 28, so you're absolutely, absolutely fine. You shouldn't waste your matches. But in the early game, the focus is to keep moving. And because we're not exhausted or overweight, we only needed to throw the stone or aim the stone once to attract him. Once he hits that torch, he's going to run away automatically. But if our condition was low or we was heavy or we was tired, he would stop. He would, he would run at us but then stop at the torch, start growling and require a second use of the stone. You can just spam it just to make sure... It's easy to just spam it. We're going this way. We do want the cattails on the river, but we're going to go this way first because there's a bedroll spawn, potential bedroll spawn right here in this train carriage. So all we're going to do is follow the rails. This, ye this yellow train carriage could have a bedroll. It's an outdoor bedroll too, so it's allowed in out open based challenges that only allow outdoor, uh, only allow the player to stay. Do not allow the player to go indoors. Uh, in out open challenges, things like cars, trains, stuff like that are absolutely viable. It's just buildings and not allowed. We have moose markings here, so this could be the moose could show up too. The moose stands right on the river if he's around. It's a beautiful day in Mystery Lake. Do we have the bedroll? We do not, so it would be standing right here, but we don't have it this time. Let's check around for any other interesting loot. Usually doesn't have much. And let's look at the time of day. So it's just past noon, but our energy is just above half. Really, our energy should be just below half. It's because we were stood inside for half the day. So that means we can utilize sprint for a little while to cover a little bit more ground, especially while the weather's good. We're going to make hay while the sun shines. Not forget our feathers always grab the feathers every corpse every carcass and those will respawn as well and i don't see the moose thankfully now let's go this way and make sure we didn't miss any cattails over here and we're going to walk the entirety of the river and grab every cattail so i'll definitely do some fast forward in here but there is one bedroll spot we're going to check along the way as well and there's this birch bark spot let's not forget birch is so good Remember, whenever we grab cattails, we need to check if we're going to want the tinder or not. Usually, I usually like to carry around 10. So, 3, 4, 5. Okay, let's grab 5 tinders. So, we're going to left click, left click. And from here on out, we'll go back to dropping tinder. So, left click, right click. Especially now that we're overweight. Once we reach our next base spot, we'll uh, make sure to drop more items.
You can see that the torch was getting low there, so instead of picking it up, we just figured I'd, I just figured I'd go straight to the next um, the next torch. It's starting to snow, so this could turn into a blizzard. It may just be snow. Sometimes it was just snow. But snow always comes before a blizzard. A blizzard doesn't always follow snow, but a blizzard is always preceded by snow. So this is a, this shows that there is a chance for a blizzard to come. And at this point in time when this happens, you need to start thinking about where your nearest shelter is. Just in case it happens. Right now, our nearest shelter would be the dam. And for as long as it's snowing, we're going to keep moving, but we're going to keep updating our location mentally. We're going to keep saying, all right. Now that we're here, this is the closest shelter, and now that we're there, this is the closest shelter, and so on. So that we can always get to it immediately, as soon as that blizzard starts. I'm going to take this moment to say if you're enjoying the content please don't forget to like and more importantly subscribe so you can see future episodes uh, it means a lot to me if you can yeah, but only do it if you're truly if you're truly uh, enjoying the content it's really useful for me it helps me to see what when i'm doing well and when i'm not doing not so well and what i can change you know uh, if there's anything you like or dislike please let me know in the comments as well we just got onto our very last torch i hope we don't fail this do we have any books no not ones that we want to burn You should be starting your fires way earlier than this. That way, if the torch goes out, you get another chance. Uh, if, the, if, the, if the fire fails, you get another chance. But in this situation, our torch is going to go out. So if the fire failed here, which it looks like it's not going to, see how we have no torch. That could have been bad. It could have been a waste of a match. And we don't need a warm up or anything. We're just going to get some new torches. This tends to happen when the weather's warm, where you're not actually cold yet, and you go through all five torches. So it's good. It's smart to... Since the weather's warm, take more than five. We'll take about seven. And when the weather's really cold, just take like two. If you're going to be making a fire anyway. It's really not worth carrying extra. It's just more weight. For no reason whatsoever, really. Okay, we don't want to use our last stick. So let's just grab six. Because we need to be able to start a fire, right? And we can't start a fire with coal. And we're just following the river. Now, there are multiple ways we could have traveled through Mystery Lake. I chose this route based on two things. One, cattails. And two, bedroll spawns. If you feel like you didn't need the cattails yet. And you already had a bedroll. You could take a more direct route straight through, straight down the tracks. You would still be able to check the key loot spots that we're going to be checking. But this way we get more food and more chance for a better roll, so let's hope we get it here in Mystery Lake this time. There is no chance for a bed roll in the muskeg. The muskeg is where the forge is, full on muskeg, so if we get to the muskeg and we don't have a bed roll yet, we're just going to forge without and then go straight to somewhere where we can get a bed roll right after. The game gets a lot easier once you find that bed roll. There's certain milestones that make the game easier. One of them is finding that bed roll. Finding your first matches is an obvious one. Hitting fire starting three means you don't need to use tinder anymore. Hitting fire starting five means you get a guaranteed fire even with a stick. Uh, hitting cooking five means you can eat predator meat. H hitting archery five means you can crouch and shoot with the bow. There's a lot of milestones that just make the game so much easier. Making the bow, finishing the forge, making the coats, stuff like that. Once you're at that point where you've got all the good stuff and your levels are maxed out, the game becomes... 10 times easier to survive, and at that point, it comes about not being an idiot, basically. So we're going to take a detour here. Once you reach this area, where it opens up again and, and it's wooded, 
goal is to continue down the river, but we're going to take a slight detour here to the blind near Alan's cave because it's another spot where there can be a bed roll. So fingers crossed. And there can be a wolf here, so it's good to have a torch ready if you're coming through an area like this where it's narrow. Or like where there's humps like there is in the ground where you might not be able to see. The wolf could be right behind this hump. If you didn't have a torch, you could get to me before I could even light one. So if we were to continue straight right now, it would take us back towards the dam. But we're not going there right now. There's a carcass here, so we're going to grab some feathers. There's a deer here, no wolf, no rabbit. Sometimes there's rabbits here, sometimes there's a wolf here. And if you're watching this video in the future, well, Hinterland do plan to do a wildlife refresh, similar to the loot refresh where all the spawns change. I think it's a great idea. It really makes the game fresh for those of us who know it quite well. But some of this information will be invalid with regards to animal spawn location, but there's no date on that yet, so I wouldn't worry about it. And we don't have the bed roll. Let's see what's in this medkit. Antibiotics would be nice. Antibiotics are always the best thing to find in those. And bandages if you don't have any, but I'm guessing we have two. Yeah, we always have two redder. Okay, we could go around gather more sticks, but let's keep moving. And our energy is pretty much where we want it to be. It's getting low, but the day is, is getting late as well. So this could be good. This could be good timing. Our next, our next loot spot has a bed. So as long as we follow this river, I imagine we'll probably reach the next loot spot just in time to get some sleep. And we'll have more cattails than we'll need. So we'll probably end up leaving some there, but we're going to figure that out once we get there. See how the snow is picking up now? It's getting thicker and there's a little bit of a haze. That pretty much means we're getting a blizzard. I'd be very surprised if this doesn't turn into a blizzard. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand at this torch where we're safe. We're going to make a quick note and we're going to say... It's going to be a mystery lake note, but because we don't have page... I think it's 15 that I usually use for mystery lake. We'll check the list soon. Because I don't have that page, I'm just going to write it here and I'm going to say... Some cattails on ML River, Mystery Lake River, and that's because we're going to leave now. We're going to leave because we can tell what the weather's trying to do. And we've got more than enough right now, so we're going to sprint. Swear sprint comes in handy. It allows us... It's obvious. Oh God, that scared me. It's obvious. But sprinting helps you move faster, right? So we can help you to get out of here before the weather gets bad. Right? Get... Before the weather gets bad, excuse me. But yeah, you can see exactly what the weather's doing. See how it's almost like snow and fog at the same time? That's that blizzard haze. This is pretty good timing because it's almost time to sleep, so we can't complain. You might notice some tap sprinting. This is something I started doing. It's something I always knew about, but I started. It's starting to become habit lately, and I really should talk about it if I'm going to do it. I wouldn't worry about it too much, but if you are interested in trying it, there is a way you can tap your sprint button, and if you time it right, you'll actually move slightly faster. Not just at the normal speed but slightly faster than a normal sprint and on top of that you actually burn your stamina slightly slower your fatigue and your calories because the game sees you as coming in and out of the sprint animation but that actually helps to propel you forward it's used a lot by speedrunners i started using it recently when we were doing a speedrun challenge and it's become habit so don't overthink it don't do it if it's too much to think about right now and you just want to learn to survive you can have survived you know i played thousands of hours of this game sprinting just like this i'm going to try and sprint the regular way but if you really want to take push this game to its limits, that's another little, I guess, exploit you could use. But right now we're doing a regular sprint. And I'm going to try and get into that habit, at least for this run. And we followed the river. And we hugged the right side. So Mystery Lake, if you don't know Mystery Lake, um, if we'd gone to the left, it would have took us to the lake. There's a potential bear spawn there. There's a bunch of cabins and fishing huts. They can have some loot, but nothing special. Because we're focusing on forging and getting the bow and getting our coats. 
we're not going to bother with these minor loot spots. We're going to focus on major loot spots. So we're hugging the right side here. And this is going to take us back to the tracks. And it's going to take us to camp office. This is camp office. And this is a favorite of a lot of people. A lot of people like to base here for good reason. It's fishing spots. There's a bear like I mentioned. It's pretty central. And there's two chances for a bedroll in the camp office. So there can be a bedroll downstairs and there can be a bedroll upstairs. And I hit ptarmigans. Since we've got a fire going and we've got a little bit of downtime. I don't see ptarmigans, but I hear ptarmigans. Am I making it up? Where are these guys? Did they already fly off? Did I scare them? No, they're right there. They were just hiding. So we're going to sneak. We're going to bob up and down like I showed you. Obviously, we want to get out of the blizzard before it starts, but since we're right next to shelter, let's take a moment to grab these. We're going to just get some calories here before we lose well fed. I'm going to drop the torch from the menu because then it doesn't make a noise. And because we only have a stone, we don't have a weapon yet. We're going to stone one of them. The rest are going to fly away because they're going to hear the stone and get scared. We're going to sneak nice and close here. We're going to use the bob a little bit more because that allows you to move a little bit quicker while sneaking. And we scared this one, so let's try not to get too close. Now, the thing with the ptarmigans is they're smaller than the rabbits, making them harder to hit. I thought I heard a wolf. They're smaller than the rabbits, making them harder to hit, but they stand still for really long times. A really long time compared to a rabbit, so you just wait, watch one of them, wait for them to stop, and you have a lot of time. And we might miss. I'm not perfect. Oh, he moved. So, yeah. Case in point, I'm certainly not a pro. But I try. I try. Maybe next time. This is going to happen with the Tamagans. The rabbits, you get as many chances as you want. They're just going to run and then they're going to come back. But the Tamagans will fly away for a while. Uh, they won't show back up in this spot for a while now. And that's fine. We have food. It was just a little bit of bonus meat. The down would have been nice. We could have used them to uh, improve our bedroll. But for now, it's absolutely fine. I need these embarrassing moments to keep me humble. <laughs> Would have been nice to have been able to just bring one in, harvest it, get a little bit of extra food tonight, save our cattails, but it's all good. Cattails are finite, meat is not. Sometimes there's a container here, that's why I'm walking over here, but it's not here this time. This is usually a pretty good stick spot. The reason I'm doing all this, getting these extra sticks, is because I know we're going to have downtime tonight, because we got here a teeny bit early because of what the weather's doing, but that's fine. You really want to plan your days and think about where you're going to get to. And once it comes towards night, you really want to think about, all right, am I going to make it to my destination or should I be stopping? And in this case, we're going to stop right here. Now, let's hope we get a bedroll. We got a wet stone. We're going to grab everything and then we're going to drop the stuff we don't want. This place has a workbench, so it's a really nice place to leave stuff. So we'll do some inventory management pretty soon. Another skillet here, which we don't need right now. More oil, which we don't need right now. That reminds me, I'm carrying an oil that I don't need, so we'll drop that soon as well. Sometimes there's a bedroll right here, but we don't have it. So that's another bedroll spawn right under the stairs. Don't need another cooking pot. We're gonna roll. We're gonna roll with the can in the pot. like flour we'll worry about the new cooking items later on i don't think they're necessary in the early game there's way too many oops there's oh no <laughs> you didn't see that there's way too many um cattails in the world to worry about these new cooking items until later on but they're going to be super useful later and we got the bedroll here okay so good stuff we finally got the bedroll i will show you the other spots on the way out of here tomorrow well, this is great. This is good. This is what we want. We're going to make a little bit of water. We'll use this upstairs stove. There's two stoves here, but the upstairs one has two, sli uh, two slots rather than three, uh, rather than one slot like the downstairs one. Excuse me. So we're doing this to make torches, but we're also going to make water. We don't need a ton, but 
since we've got a fire going and we want to we want to utilize each match as much as possible right so because we have some spare sticks let's grab all these torches and then let's throw some sticks on this and we'll keep three that gives us an hour so in an hour we can make a whole liter of water in this one and if we get the other cooking pot from downstairs we can get another liter And now let's turn this off. Yeah, one liter it was, right? Yeah, one hour, one liter. I'm going to show you a little trick with the teas. I don't know if I've shown you guys this one yet, but if we heat our teas now, I'm going to show you a little trick, okay? Basically, there's a little bit, it's another exploit, but everybody does it. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Sorry, I'm just looking for a mag lens. There can be a mag lens in here. So, if you have teas that are already hot, and you put them on the top of the fire, you can't drag them straight. Okay, let's say these are warmed up, right? And there was nothing on these tops, and I dragged it right onto the top, it would immediately burn, because the jiggle effect does not work on the hob, and it would immediately burn, and it would be gone. So, we're going to leave them here, but once they're hot, if we put them in our inventory, and then take them out and place them on this slot, and then the fire dies before the tea burns. It has to be on the slot, it can't be next to it. But if the fire dies before the tea burns, that tea will stay forever hot. So you need to put it on for the last bit of the fire. So it's not long enough for it to burn. Let's just eat real quick. Not long enough for it to burn. But it means that in the morning, we'll have two hot teas without ever having to start a fire. And they might help us push a little further without a fire. So it can be really useful. So let's fix our inventory now. Most of this is fine. Um, still have all these books that need reading. I don't usually carry three books, but since they're cooking books, which are really useful, we're going to carry three. We don't need this. That's why we have old man beards. I'm assuming we have six beards. We do. Don't need to drop any teas. These are some emergency teas. These are some teas that are going to help us get around. Clothing. We picked up an extra hat, but we can turn that into cloth on the road, so that's fine. Food. We're going to do that last, but I imagine we're going to be able to drop some food here. And we've got these torches, which, since we have a little bit of downtime now, we're just going to turn them into sticks. Let's do it now. We're going to do this with any torches that are below 20%. So the rest are fine. 30 minutes left. Okay, let's continue with our inventory. We need these cloth for the forge, so we're going to take them. We need leather. We always carry at least one piece of leather for repairs. We'll take this scrap to the forge. We will find... This is enough, and we will find more on the way, but we can always leave some at the forge for future forge sessions. It would have been smart to leave these where our birches. They're not too heavy. They're 0 0.01 kilos each, so what is that, like 10 grams? If I did the maths correctly, I believe so. Um, but it's smart to leave them with a birch. It doesn't really matter. It's not the end of the world. I'll also make a note here as well. Also has birch and goats. Just for our future self. It makes things a little bit easier. So we've got a little bit more time on this fire. 24 minutes. Let's find something to do. These take 15 minutes to break. In fact, they take 11 minutes with the hammer. So let's use the hammer. We're going to get tired here, but it doesn't matter because... We have lost no health today, pretty much. So it really doesn't matter. And this water is done. This water is almost done. Let's just speed it up. And this, I'll show you the trick now. So make sure you put them in your inventory first. Take your hot ones. Make sure that the calories are orange so you know that they're hot. Right click or left trigger L2. Place them on. 30 minutes till burn, but because the fire only has one minute left on it, we'll do the same with the birch. There we go. Now what'll happen is going to be some embers but once the embers stop these will be permanently hot it might even say cold but they'll be hot and you'll see when we take them off tomorrow now food i'm going to start with the potatoes because we have tea for what teas for warmth and potatoes are pretty heavy so let's just drop them upstairs upstairs or downstairs absolutely fine doesn't matter start with the heavier stuff we'll go in alphabetical order here so we can see exactly what we got a little bit easier we'll drop all of our spuds we don't want to carry the salt right now recipe food we're going to leave till later 
They're very useful. But right now that we just don't need them. Let's get ourselves to half calories. Or half full. But the fire's gone out, you hear that? The tea's stopped boiling. But now we could come back to these teas in a thousand days if we wish and they'll still be hot. Yes, it's an exploit. It's not too overpowered, but it is nice. They'll probably nerf it or, or fix it one day. For now, feel free to use it. It's really your choice. If you if you feel like it's a little bit too much, then go ahead and don't use it. It's just a nice way to help save matches a little bit. It's not always useful. Once you take them off, they'll cool like normal teas. Let's get to halfway. So, we'll take our nice lightweight old world food with us. We'll take this can, because it'll give us an extra warmth bonus. But let's leave... Let's not leave our cattails. I think we're okay. I'm just worried that we're slightly overweight. We're four kilos over. Let's do one. Now, it is normal to be slightly heavy on the way to the forge. In fact, it's difficult. It's hard to not be uh, overweight on the way to the forge. Uh, a lot of coal and a lot of scrap. I'm actually going to be picking up more of that stuff. So, from here to the forge, we can expect to be a little bit heavier. Once we're crafted, crafted our bow and stuff, um, we have no excuse for being overweight. Let's get fully hydrated. You'll notice sometimes I just give myself, like I'll be first, I'll just give myself a little bit of water. It's just to leave space for teas if I need them in an emergency. We're obviously not going to be in an emergency here, but it's just a habit of mine now. Oh yeah, I forgot we found an arrow shaft. I don't remember where we found that. We don't need whetstones right now, but we will need one. The whetstone is used to repair the knife and the hatchet, so it is important. And we will we will find them everywhere, so it's not a big deal that we carry them right now. But let's keep one with us, because we are going to have a knife and a hatchet very soon. Let's leave one here. These tools are good for making arrows. They're going to help us make arrows faster. We should have left them with the birch. It's absolutely fine. They'll stay with us. And let's make a note on what we have here. So we have a whetstone and some old world food, mainly, right? Antiseptic doesn't matter. We'll never use it. So it sucks that we can't use these notes yet yeah, but we will we will so mystery lake is just gonna have to have its own section on here actually we're gonna put it up here since the dam is in mystery lake oh jeez this this menu is annoying i hope inland fix it it's a little awkward if you click too far to the left here it sends you to the bottom but that's fine whatever we, we can we can deal with it so camp office has some old world food Whetstone. It also has some of the new recipe food. It's called recipe foods, oil, etc. It also has um, skillet and a spare pot. Which reminds me, we just picked up both pots. One of these, we're just going to dump on the floor here. Could have dumped it for my inventory, but we can just go in here and dump them. Right click. I'm also going to get rid of the can. Oh, wait. We want the can. Yeah, we want the can. I was thinking we had two cans. And yeah, we're all ready to sleep. Let's just do it. Let's get fully hydrated. And let's see what tomorrow brings. We're hoping for nice weather because we're going to have a day of traveling tomorrow. Heading to that forge. Unless we get caught in a blizzard. At which point we'll be waiting around. Hopefully not. Leave a little space for teas. Six days survived. Six days. So... It's a little early, so let's do some odd jobs just to pass a bit of time and get prepped. Crafting teas also reduces weight slightly since the ingredients are more lightweight than the um, than the teas themselves. I'm just going to grab some curtains because we need cloth for repairs. We have two for the forge, but none for repairs. So let's just grab two curtains. There's a bunch of curtains in here. It's a good little cloth spot. Um... Oh yeah, we still have stuff in here to go through as well. I totally forgot about that. So the jerry can is fine. It's just a liter, but let's drop this oil. We don't need too much spare oil. One liter is fine. Any more than one liter, you should just drop it. The hook. The hook's going to be hard to see. So let's not put it on the floor. Let's go put it in the in a container. We're never going to see it if it's on the floor. Oops. Because you can see, whenever I'm doing anything that doesn't require my eyes, I turn the lantern off just to save the oil. 
we got a hook. We got a tiny bit of oil, which in fact I'm not even gonna bother finding the hook. They're so easy to come by. Anything like that's easy to come by, we don't bother. And let's go to halfway on the calories here. And of course, as you can hear, today started with a blizzard. Of course it did. Typical, typical TLD. So, we're actually gonna leave it here for this time. Um, again, we didn't make much progress, but I think an hour is a really nice length for an episode. Let me know what you think about that. If you think episodes should be longer to encapsulate more information. I think the episode should be shorter. It's just difficult with the stopping and talking to really get a lot done. But I hope that cover enough new things per episode that makes it worthwhile. I'm just going to exit and enter again. Because you do not get a save when you exit. But you do get a save when you enter. And we knew it was a blizzard because we could hear that howl outside. Um, great. So I hope that helped. I hope you learned some Mystery Lake Bedroll spots. We're going to check another one next time. Um... Obviously, the bedroll will not be there. It can only be in one spot in Mystery Lake. Well, there's, it can potentially be in two spots at once, but but one of those is not the cave where we're going to be checking, basically. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll explain it properly next time. There's no point in rambling now. Thank you guys so much. I hope you're still enjoying it. Again, let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.